Hello, I'm here in Sheffield Botanical Gardens. It's um, 20, what is it, 21st of July 2019. I just want to spend a few minutes um, talking about the problem with the horse chestnuts with the um, with the horse chestnut leaf miner. Um, here you can see a very big old horse chestnut tree that is suffering quite a bit. A lot of those leaves have turned brown and listening to experts talk and reading up about it a bit. The, the disease actually goes from the bottom. You see the bottom leaves affected first and then the top leaves further up later on because this insect overwinters in the leaf litter on the ground and then kind of works its way up the tree. Um, so you can see that that's really quite badly affected because um, obviously down there you will see that it's very very sheltered when those leaves fall a lot of them will collect under the tree in the sur surrounding shrubbery um, and then the insect will overwinter and climb back up the tree the next year also that tree is probably under quite a bit of stress we've we've had a bit of rain but this year has been overall again not as bad as last year but it's been quite dry um, and i still hold to my theory that one of the problems or a, a mitigating part of the problem is is that the more the tree is under stress from drought um, horse chestnuts tend to like a damper um, location the more competition a tree has for water and nutrients you've got a holly there you've got other trees around you've got other shrubs underneath um i've got a sycamore there um the more under stress that tree is going to be and therefore the more it will succumb so what i want to do now is just to you've seen how bad that tree is but i'm just going to walk up here if i can remember where it is just up to the rose garden literally 50 yards away if that everything's looking lovely and green because we've recently had quite a bit of rain uh, on when was it last Thursday or Friday Saturday at the moment can't remember um, love that silver leaf pear I think that is but here's another big old chestnut horse chestnut and if you look at that compared to the other tree as I say it's what 50 yards away virtually nothing there is a little bit as you get closer you can see little bits of brown but on the whole if you stand back again it's a big mature tree lots of fruit on there huge huge horse chestnut but what's the difference the difference is other than grass which is shallow rooting there's very little competition you know for water and nutrients around it not only that but when the leaf litter fall when the leaves fall in autumn and you've got the leaf litter on the ground when the uh, park staff come and mow the lawn they will take up a lot of leaves with them they may even i don't know what the maintenance routine is here um, but they may even um, you know get rid of the leaves sweep the leaves up take them somewhere burn them or put them in a compost heap or whatever i don't know um, but either way there looks a much healthier tree than the one 50 yards further down there and we can have a walk around the other side of it you know it's not it's not completely free of the of the leaf miner 
but it's much, much less effective. So this may be a way of, certainly in parks and gardens, of making sure in autumn that all the fallen leaves are cleared away, or as many as possible, uh, to reduce that impact and then possibly burnt. Um, looks lovely, masses of fruit on there, lots of conkers. Absolutely stunning tree. Um, now obviously this, this will get worse over summer, so come September, October, you know, you would expect to see these leaves which have got a little bit of infection. You would expect to see that a little bit worse. But certainly, when you compare this with that other tree down there, this tree looks to be in much better condition. Um, so yeah, so that's my uh, theory about how we can keep this leaf miner at bay, as I say, especially for in parks and gardens, to clear all the horse chestnut trees underneath, clear the litter away. Um, you know, you, you, I mean, from a, an environmental point of view, you, you don't want to do it. You want to leave leaf litter there to maybe rot down and it all goes back into the soil to keep the soil nice and healthy. But in this case, you know, um, it may be worth doing, especially when you've got a plant in, in, a, in a grassy area like this. So yeah, I think that's all I want to say, so bye for now.